So I'm home now, but today I went to let me lower this a little bit. The Torture Museum at the Museum of Man here in San Diego and uh, in Balboa Park, and I really wanted to see it because torture's kind of always been interesting to me, because I kind of wondered like where the creativity sparked, the inspiration sparked for certain t devices of torture, how people could bring themselves to torture others, and like the evolution of torture and like seeing the different tools. It wasn't anything like morbid, like ooh, cool torture or anything. It was just kind of like a curiosity, like how do people bring themselves to do this? What pushed an art form of torture? And they called it instruments of torture, and I was like thinking like what is the... Uh, their screams sort of like here's a high pitch one here's one low pitch one let's torture in unison and see if we can get a song out of them or that their pain was beautiful or a musical or something that's not me thinking that was just uh, what the, based off the title of the exhibit but it was pretty cool it was kind of small I thought there'd be a lot more devices but it was interesting to see stuff that um, a lot of it didn't say whether it was like reconstructed or if it was actually from most of the time it was like um, close to the end of the medieval era beginning of the renaissance uh, up until like some of it seemed to be like uh, Victorian times almost and a lot of it came from a private collection in Italy so I was like some morbid dude in Italy loves his torture devices um, but the first thing you see when you come in after you see like just pictures on the wall is the Iron Maiden which is everybody's like you say torture most people are like Iron Maiden it's like seems to be the one that everybody knows about and to me it looked like a female Dalek and I was like Doctor Who <laughs> you know like all excited about it and um, it was interesting to see it. It looked like a doll like with a female head on the top. And there was a lot of them, like some of them I was like cringing. I was like, oh god, how could you do this? Like, there was this pear-shaped device. I don't remember the name. I think I, um, you weren't allowed to take pictures, or you weren't supposed to at least. Um, that you'd put it inside someone's either in their backside, in their vagina, or in their mouth. And then it has three pieces and looks like a pear and then a screw. And then so you kind of just like, basically you tear them open. And I was like, I can't handle looking at this right now. And then um, they also had um, like things chopping off your hand, and then like regular ones that you've seen, just like regular axes and whatnot. And uh, they had a fake, um, um, how come I'm, I keep calling them the Grim Reaper, but that's totally completely wrong. Um, the executor, or the executioner, or whatever. Um, and they had some weird ones from like Holland that were like for a drunkard. There was like this barrel that was painted all happy, and you'd put it over their shoulders and their neck. And they'd have to walk around with it, and then they wore like this mask. The masks I thought were the most interesting pieces. These metal masks that they would put over to humiliate or shame somebody, which is basically a form of torture. And some of them would actually kill the people because depending on the length of time you would wear them, they would cut into your flesh and uh, cause gangrene, different things like that. But, and it also, um, a lot of the spikes and everything there were either worn down from time or probably, um, cut down so people wouldn't touch them. It was a European style display so everything was kind of like there for you to touch but you weren't supposed to touch it. Um, Americans are going to touch it. <laughs> like trying not to touch things. And there's um, I wish I would have written down the names of these different things. It was kind of creepy because a lot of the things were I'm like all proud to be German but then most of the torture devices were German in origin and I was like wow my people are a little messed up. And uh, we went to the Museum of Man afterwards um, which was all like Native American stuff they have different displays all the time, but there's certain areas of like the evolution from our human forms now from primates, and then there's like pictures of the Near East, Asia, you know, Americas and everything. I'm like, I said to my friend, I said, where's the European stuff? Because I'm not very, I'm, I don't have a real connection to like Native American things. The other pieces were interesting, but the majority of it was Native American. I don't, I don't have, I don't really understand their culture or anything. I've never been immersed in it in any way, whereas she has. And the Indians here are casino kind of Indians, like where they don't see a lot of their culture. Um, I'm not saying that they don't have culture. I'm just saying that from going when I go on the reservation, it's like it's a casino. I don't see anything else going on. We do have events sometimes, but I haven't been to one since I was a child. I don't know if it's still just how strong it's still going in this modern time. But I said to her, I said, "Where's the European stuff?" And she said, "Across the street," because that's where the torture museum was. It was connected though. And I was like, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, you see all these cultures and the beauty of those cultures, but then when you want to see the European stuff, it's all torture devices. Because all the torture devices were European origin. Mostly Italy, Germany. There was a few French ones, and uh, I think I saw a few Spanish ones, but most of them were German in origin, it seemed like. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting to see all that. So, um, 
I do, it was twenty dollars, which was a little pricey. The museum is not that big. I mean, uh, the torture museum exhibit, which most people are paying that much for. If you go to just the Museum of Man, it's twelve fifty, but you can't buy the torture exhibit separately. So you have to pay twenty dollars, and you get to go to both. And I do say it's worth it though, if you're interested in like the historical aspect of torture and everything, and um, a few of the things I was looking at collars and the chastity belt, and I was like, how much from the bet the majority of the people coming in here are fetishists and kinksters? <laughs> like, that's like the idea I had. I was like, oh my god, like I'm like, you see these things now, um, but people are doing them voluntarily, and uh, yeah. not with cast iron either, so they're probably not getting gangrene and dying, but. Um, you see my point, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so if you're in San Diego, I, it's just starting on July 14th, so we should be here for a while. I think the last time I was here was like 10 or 15 years ago. So get there while you can. There's a guillotine in there too, which is really cool. Um, guillotines have always fascinated me for some reason. I think it's more of a mental torture because you are being walked up to this. Usually it's like on a platform or something. You're being walked up to this. You know you're going to die. You know how horrible this device is. It's huge. The thing stands up like all the way to the ceiling. Like if my bedroom would go past the ceiling over my roof. Uh, the ceiling was taller in the museum. And you see this blade, the shining blade, and you know that you're going to be laid into it. And once you get that clasp around your neck, I can't imagine like your heart racing and everything. That mental torture must be insane. So, um, yeah. So uh, I could see the guillotine being a torture device. It's pretty scary. <laughs> um, and then there was like the rack and a couple other things there. I was looking more for like more little devices that they would have used. But uh, it was mostly larger things. It was still interesting though. Um, I know I saw the cage. There's, I don't remember what it's called. They, they put you in. And it was interesting to see some of these different things because the people were a lot smaller during this time period. The majority of the pieces were from 1500 to 1800 that I could tell. Though some of them are a little bit later, but I think the latest period piece was uh, last year's in like 1848 or something that I can recollect from the reading the little placards. But um, yeah. I will love to be like a little curator in there and take people around. <laughs> some people were really disgusted too. Like one woman was like, ew, oh god, uh. I'm like, why are you in here? I'm like, learn from it like how the, the point of the museum was um it was helping fund um people who are victims of torture since it's still happening today and it's talking about modern day torture as well it didn't show any devices or anything but it was showing some pictures of like um guantanamo and i always forget the name of the other one um but it was recently within like the last five years um in the middle east so um maybe it's good i don't remember it or remember the name because i don't really want to remember that stuff but, um, yeah, so I do recommend seeing it. It is, is interesting. It is part of history. You can kind of make you think about how fragile the human mind is to be broken on these different devices and the, their body and how fragile our bodies are. Some of us pretend like we're invincible, but um, these torture devices prove otherwise. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching.